All right, so let's take a look at HPC or high performance computing on AWS. So HPC is for uh, running large complex simulations and deep learning workloads in the cloud with a complete suite of high performance computing product services, gains insight faster and quickly move uh, from idea to market, blah, 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 blah. It's for ML or very complex scientific computing stuff. These run uh, at least on C5Ns, okay? And the way it works is that you use this um, CLI called P cluster, where you have this parallel compute. Uh, or uh, uh, it was parallel cluster stuff. And so let's see if we can get this installed very easily. Um, so what I'm gonna do is see how hard it is to install. Now, I don't recommend you running this because I don't know what it's gonna cost me. And if I make a misconfiguration, I don't want you to have that spend here, but I don't think it's that dangerous. So I'm gonna go back over to US East one here. I'm gonna open up Cloud Shell and I'm gonna give it a moment to load. And so as that is loading, let's take a look at how we would go ahead and install this. So install the current parallel, um, uh, it was parallel. I think we can just copy that line, okay? And so we have to wait for our environment to spin up, all right? So once it has spun up, we will install it. And then we will jump over to this tutorial here. Okay, so we'll give this a moment. And after waiting a little while here, it looks like our shell is ready. It looks like it's in bash. Um, I'm just gonna type in AWS S3 LS, that's a sanity check. Okay. And it works, that's great. So we'll go back over here and I'm gonna go back up to install for Linux. And what I need is that single command. Where is it? So I'm certain that we already have Linux or Python installed but I just want the command to install it. We saw it a moment ago here. I'm just gonna back out till I can find it. Uh, one more, there it is. So it's under, oh, it's this link here. And that's what I talk about the documentations being tricky. Sometimes you have to click these uh, headings here to find stuff. So this is the first time installing it. So we'll grab that. Usually you're supposed to create in virtual environments with Python, I don't care. This is my cloud shell, it doesn't matter to me. So we're gonna go ahead and download that and hopefully it is fast and it was super fast, which was really nice. And so what we'll do is go check out the P cluster version. Okay, and that looks fine to me. I'm gonna go down below here to run our first job. Um, the returns, the it gives outputs. I don't think we need to configure it because we already have our CLI. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create ourselves a new cluster. Um, beginning cluster creation, configuration file, config not found. So I guess we do have to configure this. Configure. And it's asking what region do we want to be in? Um, if I have US East one, I would choose it. For some reason, it's all the way for number 13. That is not a lucky number, but I'm gonna choose it anyway. anyway. No key pair found in US East one region. Please create one of the following. Um, so create an EC2 key pairs. Uh, no options found for EC2 key pairs. That's fine. So what I'll, what I'll do is go over here and we'll go over to EC2. And we will go over to key pairs, key pairs, key pairs, key pairs. We'll create ourselves a new one here. So we'll say um, HPC key pair or just my HPC. So we know what it's for. We have PuTTY or PEM. We're gonna do PEM because we're on Linux, we'll create that. And notice that it downloaded the PEM down, down here uh, and we're going to need that for later. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll type in P cluster here again, configure, we'll choose 13. We'll choose number one here. Uh, allowed values for the scheduler. I have no idea what these are. Uh, let's choose the number one. Allowed values for the operating system, Amazon Linux 2, I know what that is. Minimum cluster size, one. Maximum cluster size, two. Head notice instance, oh, T2 micro, you can do that? Yeah, let's do it. I didn't know we could do that. Enter, compute type, uh, T2 micro, sure. So I thought that we'd have to use a C5N, but I guess apparently not. Automate VPN, uh, VPC creation, yes, of course. Network configuration, so allowed values for the network configuration. Uh, head node in a public subnet and, com and compute fleet in a private subnet. Uh, head node and compute 
Yeah, we'll do it in the both just to make our lives easier. I don't care. First one sounds more secure, of course. And so, oh, it's creating a cloud formation stack. Wow, this is easy. I thought this was gonna be super painful. Okay, so we'll go over here. We'll go take a look at what cloud formation's doing. All right. Now, I don't care if we actually run a task on here, but it was just interesting to go through the process to see how hard it was. And we will go look at what resources are being created. So it's creating an internet gateway. So it's literally creating a isolate VPC for it, which is totally fine, I guess. Um, it's creating a subnet, it's creating a route table, refresh here. Um, I'm not sure how much it wants to create here. It just looks like VPC, that's all it's creating. I thought maybe the EC2 instances would show up here, but maybe it's going to launch that at, at, on a need be basis. Okay, so that's all created. Oh, now it's doing a VPC gateway. I think VPC gateways cost money. Let's go take a look here, VPC pricing. Do, do, do. Yeah, there's a in, uh, transfer fee, so just be careful about that. You know, again, you just can just watch along here. You don't have to do it. Default route depends on public. So now it's creating EC2 route. I don't know what an AWS EC2 route is. I've never seen that before. Sometimes what we can do is go into EC2 and then take a look on the left-hand side. You see anything in here? We don't know what it is. We just type in EC2 route, cloud formation. Sometimes cloud formation is great for figuring out what a component is. Not all components are represented in the um, AWS um, uh, management console. So specify a route in the route table. Oh, it's just a route, okay. And we'll go back here, we'll refresh. So that is done. Is the stack done? Created complete, good. We'll go back to our cloud shell. It says you can edit your configuration file or simply do et cetera. So now let's see if we can create the cluster. I assume this would create EC2 instances. So the job schedule you are using is SGE. This is deprecated in future use parallel cluster. Well, should have told me, <laughs> okay? There is a new version of 301 parallel available. I don't understand because I just installed it, right? We'll go back to CloudFormation. We're just gonna probably create nested stacks, which that's what I thought it would do. Nested stacks means that it's reliant. So there's one main one and then there's a uh, children's stack. So go here, see what resources it's creating. Oh, whole bunch of stuff. Wow. So many things at SQS queue, SNS, uh, network interface, a DynamoDB table. Yeah, you, you probably don't wanna run this. You just wanna watch me do it. And then we go into here, it's creating uh, an EC2 volume, so that's gonna be EBS. And then here we have uh, a log group. I don't know why they separated those out. Didn't seem very necessary. We are waiting on the Elastic IP. That always takes forever, creating Elastic IP. Root instance profile, that is the IAM rule for it. Oh, that didn't take too long. These, these take a long time, I, I never know why. Create a role, it's really easy, but attaching an IAM policy, you're always waiting for those. Um, so I'm gonna just stop it here, I'll be back in a second, because I don't wanna have to make you watch me stare at the screen here, okay? All right, so after a really, really long wait, um, and it always takes some time there, it finally created, I'm not sure what it's made. I mean, we generally saw over here in the outputs, but usually the cost that I'm worried about is whatever it's launching under EC2. It might not even have uh, launched any servers here. We're gonna take a look here and see if there's anything. So we have a master and a compute and they're T2 micro. So it seems pretty safe here. Um, this compute is not running yet. So I'm assuming that this is like the machine that does the computing. And maybe if you had multiple machines here, like that would be the cluster, like it would manage multiple computes. Uh, I'm not particularly sure, but let's just keep going through the tutorial and see what we can do. The next step is we need to get this PEM key in our cloud shell here. So this, I don't know where this is, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to my desktop. I'm doing this off screen, by the way. So I'm moving it to my desktop and then I'm just gonna go and upload the file, okay? And there it is, so we'll say open and we'll say upload and it's going to upload it here onto this machine. And I believe this is on like, a, I think this uses an e EFS instance. Like if you're wondering where the storage for Cloud Shell is, if we go over here, I think it's EFS. 
Is it? Uh, I don't know where it is. Okay, <laughs> maybe it's just a, uh, maybe it's somewhere else. Okay, I can't remember where it is. But anyway, um, so now it's created the cluster. Can I hit enter here? Okay. Can I create a tab? Like if I quit this, is it going to kill it? It exited it, which is, I think it's fine. I don't think it stopped uh, running. And so now if I do an LS, there's my key. And so we can go back to our instructions. We just have too many tabs open here. Drag this all the way to the left here. And so we can try to use our key here to lo uh, log in. So what I'm gonna do is go here and we'll say my HPC PEM and see if that works. We'll say yes. And permission denied. It is required your private key is not accessible. That's because we have to chmod it. Um, I never remember the command anymore because I rarely SSH into machines. But if we go to connect and we go to SSH client, it'll tell us what we need to run. Chmod 400. Okay, so that's what we need to do is we need to do a Chmod 400. Just wanted to grab that code there. Okay. And now if we hit up, we should SSH into the machine. There we are. We are in the instance. We'll type it exit. And so now we want to run our job on this machine. And if we go back over to here, I guess we can go create our first job. So I'm just doing this in Vi. And I'm gonna paste that in, yep. And I don't want the first line. Oh, okay, that's perfect, oh, great. Right quit. Oh, there's no file name, hold on here. So I need to name this file something. So I'm gonna say job.sh and we're gonna paste that again here. We'll say paste. And I don't know if that's cut off. Yeah, it is, okay, great. Is that one okay? I don't trust that the first line is there. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is go back to our tutorial here. It's shebang forward slash bin forward slash bash. Uh, this, then that forward slash bin forward slash bash. Just double check it. Looks good to me. We're gonna quit that. I'm just gonna make sure that it is what it, we said it is. So job.sh looks correct to me, good. And so we'll try to run our job here. So I'm gonna say q um, job.sh ls. And I guess it really depends on what we decided to use when we set up that thing. I can't remember what we choose as our q. We do qstat. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I think the thing is like, you see how we have SGE? I think that that's what we use to queue up jobs. And so we have to have that installed probably. So install, configure SunGrid engine, SGE install um, Linux. Oh boy, that looks like a lot of work. So, I don't think we need to do anything further here, but as far as I understand, the idea is that you're choosing uh, some kind of way to manage these. And so I'm not sure what Q, Q sub is. Let's just go look up what that is. What is Q sub? Oh, that is the SunGrid engine. Okay, so how do we install that? Um, I'm just gonna see if we can install it. So I'm gonna do, I think this is using yum. So if I do clear here, clear, yum install qsub. Let's see if I can do it. Mm, sudo yum install qsub, no package available. Amazon Linux 2 qsub, because that's probably what we're running in Cloud Shell. qsub, doesn't tell us how to install it. That's great. So that's probably what it is. And so in order to use this, we would have to install that sun, whatever, whatever. And then we go through, we do QSub, it would queue it up. Um, you could do QSTAT, cat hello, destroy it. That's pretty much all we really need to know to understand this. Um, it would have been nice to queue up a job and see it work, but you know, 
we're getting kind of into a hairy territory here. And I think that we fundamentally understand how this does work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to remove the job.sh here. And I want to destroy this cluster. Um, so I'm going to do p cluster commands to figure out what all the commands are. And there's probably a delete command. So we'll go back up here. P cluster. Where is our crate? So we'll say delete. Okay, and so what that's gonna do is just tear down all this stuff now. So if we go over to CloudFormation. Okay, and it looks like it's destroying. So yeah, I'll see you here uh, back in a bit when it's all destroyed, okay? All right, so after a short little wait there, it uh, has destroyed. It's been so long that I uh, my connection vanished, but just make sure if you did follow along for whatever reason, uh, you know, make sure that the stuff is deleted and it looks like it did not destroy uh, this. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. That's just VPC stuff. So I'm not too worried about it. I know that's gonna roll back no problem. And so I'm gonna consider this done. So I'm gonna make my way back to the management console, close this stuff up and we are good to go uh, for our next thing.